This is another topic on border control and security. My name is Seychelle and H. Marasigan. I am a licensed customs broker. In this video, we are going to talk about Title II of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, Chapter 3, Exercise of Police Authority. Section 214, Persons Exercising Police Authority. For the effective implementation of this act, the following person are authorized to effect search, seizure, and arrest. Letter A. Officials of the Bureau, District Collectors, Deputy Collectors, Police Officers, Agents, Inspectors, and Guards of the Bureau. B. Upon authorization of the Commissioner, Officers and Members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP, and National Law Enforcement Agencies. And Letter C. Officials of the BIR or the Bureau of Internal Revenue on all cases falling within the regular performance of their duties when payment of internal revenue taxes is involved. So in this um, paragraph of Section 214, it is telling us that the following person are authorized to effect search, seizure, and arrest. So in Section 214, the persons who are exercising police authority is grouped into three okay so the first group is the officials of the bureau the district collectors the deputy district collectors the police officers the agents the inspectors and the guards of the bureau of customs okay the second group um would be when given authorization from the commissioner the officers and the members of the armed forces of the philippines and the national law enforcement agency and lastly which is the group c are the officials of the BIR on all cases falling within the regular performance of their duties when payment of internal revenue taxes is involved. So all these people are um, given the authority or the police authority to do search, okay? Or if ever um, something has happened or something is missing, then they have the power to search over a premise that is under the customs um, control and supervision. Okay, and they also can do um, seizure or they can follow a certain uh, person or a certain um, cargo that is um, subject for uh, alert order or, for example, um, a person has violated a certain provision in the CMTA, then they can, this person can do um, the arrest of this uh, violators. All officers authorized by the commissioner to exercise police authority shall at all times coordinate with the commissioner. All goods seized by deputized officers pursuant to this section shall be physically turned over immediately to the bureau, and in this case bureau means the bureau of customs, unless provided under existing laws, rules, and regulations. For this purpose, mission orders shall clearly indicate the specific name carrying out the mission and the task to be carried out. Subject to the approval of the Secretary of Finance, the Commissioner shall define the scope, areas covered, procedures and conditions governing the exercise of such police authority, including the custody of the goods, and the responsibility of the seized goods. The rules and regulations to this effect shall be furnished to the concerned government agencies and personnel for guidance and compliance. All seizures pursuant to this section must be effected in accordance with the provisions on the conduct of seizure proceedings and provided for in Chapter 3 and 4 of Title 11 of this Act. So let us um, first know the description or the definition of the word mission orders. So, this means a written directive or order given to any customs officer or any deputized agent 
who must be a government employee with regular plantilla position issued by the Commissioner of Customs, Customs official authorized by the Commissioner in writing, or a Customs officer exercising police authority to carry out specific instruction. So these mission orders are the directive on what the person that are given authority should do. Okay? So they are the... Uh, this is a written uh, order wherein um, it contains a specific name uh, who are uh, of people who are going to uh, carry out a task or a mission that is given by the Commissioner of Customs. And also, um, subject to the approval of the Secretary of Finance, um, the Commissioner of Customs should be defining the scope and all the areas covered uh, and the uh, procedures that should be done by these people who are authorized to um, exercise police authority on the custody and seizure of a certain um, smuggled goods or people who have violated the CMTA or any laws that is related to it. Place where authority may be exercised, Section 215. All persons exercising police authority, as described in the preceding section, shall only exercise powers within customs premises, as provided for in Section 303 of this Act, and within the limits of the authority granted by the Commissioner. Port and airport authorities in all ports of entry shall provide authorized customs officers with unhampered access to all the premises within their administrative jurisdiction. So Section 215 is telling us that all persons who are exercising police authority shall only exercise powers within the customs premises. Okay, So those customs premises has been provided for in Section 303 of um, the CMTA as well. Okay, And they have also uh, been given the power over the places or any um, limits that has been uh, given by the Commissioner of Customs. So this uh, places also includes ports and airports, okay? And all the ports of entry that um, is under the Customs uh, Administrative Jurisdiction. Section 216, Exercise of Power of Seizure. Any person exercising police authority under this act has the power and duty to seize any vessel, aircraft, cargo, goods, animals, or any other movable property when the same is subject to forfeiture or when they are subject of a fine imposed under this act. Section 216 of the CMTA is telling us that um, any person who has been given the police authority has the power and um, the responsibility to seize any um, vessel or aircraft or cargo goods or articles or whatsoever um, property that is subject um, to forfeiture okay so when we talk about forfeiture it means loss of any property without compensation as a result of defaulting on contractual obligation or as a, or as a penalty for illegal conduct so um, in customs when we talk about for feature of a certain um, goods or articles, it means that that um, particular goods or article has violated a certain provision in the CMTA or any laws that are um, related to the CMTA. So when that particular um, uh, goods or article has been subject to seizure, okay, it means that there is something wrong with that particular article and that um, or that particular importer or exporter um, will be uh, liable for all for the value of the goods that has been um, forfeited in case that they those, those person who are exercising the police power caught that particular goods or article. Duty of customs officer to disclose official character section two one seven for the proper exercise of police authority. Any authorized perso person shall disclose the nature of the authority upon being questioned at the time of exercise thereof and shall exhibit the corresponding written authority issued by the commissioner. 
So section um, 217 of the CMTA is just telling us that um, those person who has been given the authority um, to exercise uh, police power okay, um, has been given the duty to disclose what are they going to do um, in case that um, they are questioning a certain um, person or they are seizing or forfeiting a certain goods okay so they need to um, show a corresponding written order okay and that written order is what we call the mission order and that mission order is being issued by the commissioner and it is only the commissioner that has the right to um, uh, show or to uh, give the mission order to any uh, person who has been given the authority to exercise police power. Section 218. Authority to require assistance and information. Any person exercising police authority may demand the assistance of and request information from the Philippine National Police or PNP, the AFP, and other national law enforcement agencies when necessary to effect any search, seizure, and arrest. It shall be the duty of any police officer and other national law enforcers to give such lawful assistance. Okay, so section 218 is telling um, us that those person who has been given authority, okay, or police authority should require help and any needed information from the PNP, the Philippine National Police and also the armed forces of the Philippines and all the other law enforcement agencies when they needed it most, okay? Because the main um, function of the PNP, AFP, and other lawful uh, enforcement agencies is to also affect search, seizure, and arrest, okay? So, since the Bureau of Customs has been given, given the power um, also to do search, seizure, and arrest, then it is their um, responsibility to ask assistance to those who are really trained to effect such um, search, seizure, and arrest. Okay? So, um, and it shall also be the duty of any police officer or, or any national law enforcement um, people to help the Bureau of Customs or to help all those that has been given um, police authority uh, to do their job in uh, searching, arresting and following those who has violated the CMT or any other laws that are related to it. Section 219 Authority to enter properties Any person exercising police authority may at any time enter, pass through and search any land, enclosure, warehouse, store, building, or structure not principally used as a dwelling house. When a security personnel or any other employee lives in the warehouse, store, or any building, structure, or enclosure that is used for storage of goods, it shall not be considered as a dwelling house for purposes of this act. Okay, so section 219 is telling us that Persons who are given uh, police authority uh, shall enter any properties, okay? So that means um, any uh, land or warehouse or store building that is not used as a dwelling house. So what do we mean by a dwelling house, okay? So when we talk about dwelling house, it means that a certain... A person or a certain group of people is living in that particular place okay so for example a warehouse um, has been used as a place of living for a certain group of people okay so when that particular um, place is um, being used as a dwelling house then those person okay that has been given customs authority or police authority cannot enter those areas even if they are warehouses okay but 
when a security personnel or other employee that um, are only living in a warehouse store or any building okay, that is being used as a storage of goods okay, so that particular place is not considered to be a dwelling house right so if you see the difference when we talk about dwelling house it means that that particular area is only being used to um uh, for people to live in so they do not have any goods in there or they do not use that particular warehouse or building as a storage area okay but if that particular building is being used as a storage and the personnels of that particular warehouse are living in that um, in that place or in that warehouse itself then that place or that property is not uh, considered as a dwelling house so that means the, the people who has been given authority to um, do uh, or given police authority shall have the right to effect um, seizure and arrest on that particular property. 20. Authority to search dwelling house. A dwelling house may be entered and searched only upon warrant issued by a judge of a competent court. The sworn application thereon showing probable cause and particularly describing the place to be searched and the goods to be seized. Okay. So, Section 220 is only telling us that the people who has been given police authority can also search a dwelling house, but they need to have a warrant, okay, or a search warrant from the judge of a competent court. So, that means you can only, people who has been given police authority can only, um, effect search seizure and arrest in a particular dwelling place or a dwelling house if for example a judge has already issued a search warrant for that particular dwelling place okay and then there should be a sworn application okay that show that there is a probable cause okay or there is a um, reason a valid reason that has been accepted by the judge that that particular dwelling place or that particular property has really um, needed to be searched or something or someone has violated a law that they needed to uh, look or to search an evidence in that particular place or area okay and this search warrant should um, aside from the probable cause should also show uh, particularly the place to be searched and also the goods to be seized okay so for example um uh, a certain warehouse where people are living into it has been reported to police or to the bureau of customs that a certain smuggled goods is in there okay so since it is a dwelling house and it's not a place where um, really goods has to be stored then the bureau of customs should be um uh going to uh, the judge okay and the judge should be of a competent court and then file a case there and tell them that something is need to be seized because there is a probable cause um, that is uh, pointing that something is wrong or there is really a smuggled goods inside that particular dwelling house okay so that is um, what section 220 is telling us that we cannot that the bureau of customs or those people that is given the police authority cannot just go and search something in um in a place or in buildings wherein it is considered as a dwelling house. authority to search vessels or aircrafts and persons or goods conveyed therein section 221 any person exercising police authority under this act may board inspect search and examine a vessel or aircraft and any container, trunk, package, box, or envelope found on board and physically search and examine any person thereon. In case of any probable violation of this act, the person exercising police authority may seize the goods, vessel, aircraft, and any part thereof. 
Such power to search includes removal of any false bottom, partition, bulkhead, or any other obstruction for the purpose of uncovering any concealed, jutiable, or forfeitable goods. The proceeding her herein authorized shall not give rise to any claim for damage caused to the goods, vessel, or aircraft unless there is gross negligence or abuse of authority in the exercise thereof. Okay, so section 221 is telling us that those person who has been given police authority has the right to do a search on all the vessel and aircraft and all the people and the and goods that are in that particular vessel or aircraft. So for example, the vessel or the aircraft has um, been suspected to be carrying a smuggled goods. Then um, this uh, people who has been given police authority has the right to um, go on board that particular vessel or aircraft that is subject to um, that is suspected to be carrying smuggled goods and they can do physical search and they can also examine all the person inside that particular vessel or aircraft okay they can also do seizure okay of that particular vessel or aircraft if they really do suspect that they violated a certain provision of the customs laws and, and other laws that are related to it. And when, for example, that they uh, really uh, knew that this vessel or aircraft really violated um, this per uh, uh, law in the CMTA, for example, they committed smuggling, then they this search um, that they can do in that particular vessel or, or aircraft um, includes also the removal of any um, thing that is hindering them from um, seeing the smuggled goods that they are uh, looking for. Okay, so for example, that um, that particular smuggled good is under a partition or is inside a partition, so they can um, remove that particular partition and and all the other is obstruction to uncover the concealed. Um, forfeited goods or if there is any other goods that are jutiable that the uh, ves that the persons um, who, or the, the persons in that particular vessel or aircraft did not declare into the Bureau of Customs okay but um, all this effects um, I mean all these seizures and searches that they do uh, and all the uh, things that they have removed from uh, that particular vessel or aircraft all those damages that arise from all those searches shall be uh, shouldered by the owner of the vessel or aircraft or the owner of the goods or the articles okay but it will be uh, the it will be the liability of the persons authori uh, authorized to effect seizures okay or all those um, people who has been given authority or police authority uh, will be liable if they see that there is a gross negligence or abuse of authority in their two two authority to search vehicles other carriers persons and animals upon reasonable costs any person exercising police authority may open and examine any box, trunk, envelope, and other container for purposes of determining the presence of jutiable or pro prohibited goods. This authority includes the search of receptacles used for the transport of human remains and dead animals. Such authority likewise includes the power to stop, search, and examine any vehicle or carrier, person or animal, suspected of holding or conveying jutiable or prohibited goods. Okay, section 222 is telling um, us that the, those person has been given police authority has the right to search any vehicles, carriers, person, and, and animals. So, it, this also includes vessels and aircrafts. Okay? So, they have the... Uh, aside from the vessel and aircraft, they can also examine like the trucks or any other vehicles that carries um, any goods or imp imported or exported. Okay, so they can open any um, box, trunk, or envelope, 
or any container that is inside that particular vehicle okay that is to determine if um, that vehicle is um, carrying uh, goods that has not been declared that are subject for duty and also um, any smuggled or prohibited goods okay and um, this authority in section 222 also includes um, the search uh, of receptacles used for transport of human remains and animals and also it includes the power to stop search and examine any vehicle or carrier person or animal suspected of holding or conveying duty authority to search persons arriving from foreign countries upon reasonable cause travelers arriving from foreign countries may be subjected to search and detention by the customs officers the dignity of the person under search and detention shall be respected at all times Female inspectors may be employed for the examination and search of persons of their own sex. Okay, so section 223 is telling us that people who has been given the police authority also has the, the right to search persons, okay? And those, um, and this person are from uh, the, the other country or a foreign country. Okay, so section 223 is telling that it is not only um, the vehicles, aircrafts, transportation, or goods or articles are subject to the authority of this um, person who has been given police um, authority, but also people that are coming from other country. Okay, so there should be a reasonable cause why they should be... Um, searching or or arresting a certain um person okay there should always be a reasonable cause so um their power includes search and detention so so when we mean detention they can um have the person uh on a customs officer's office okay so they can um ask them questions in uh, that particular customs office, okay, and interrogate him or her if they has been if they have been uh, suspected of violating a certain law. But they should remember that um, the dignity of that person under search and detention shall always be respected at all times. Okay, so the Bureau of Customs or those people who are exercising police authority should make sure that. Um, if they are going to search the body of a female suspect or a female person, then a female inspector should be the ones to do that, okay? So, a uh, male inspector should not search a female passenger or a, a female traveler, okay? So, it should only be a person of their own sex that should um employed that for the examination section 224 power to inspect and visit the commissioner or any customs officer who is authorized by writing in the commissioner may demand evidence of payment of duties and taxes on imported goods openly for for sale or kept in storage in the event that he interested party fails to produce such evidence within 15 days, the goods may be seized and subject to forfeiture proceedings, provided that during the proceedings, the interested party shall be given the opportunity to provide or show the source of the goods and the payment of duties taxes thereon, provided further that when the warrant of seizure has been issued, but subsequent documents presented evidencing proper pay payment are found to be authentic and in order, the district collector shall, within 15 days from the receipt of the motion to squash or recall the warrant, cause the immediate release of the goods seized, subject to clearance by the commissioner, provided finally that the release thereof shall not be contrary to law. Okay. The commissioner... Or any customs officer okay that has been authorized by the commissioner in writing they can demand evidence of payment of duties and taxes on imported goods that are for sale or 
if it will be kept in storage or a warehouse okay so they can ask the importer for the evidence of payment of duties and taxes okay but if ever that if the importer fails to produce um the evidence of payment and duties within 15 days they can seize the goods okay and it should be subject to forfeiture proceedings okay but during the proceedings the interested party shall be given again the opportunity to prove that the source of the goods and the payments the source of the goods and the payment of duties and taxes provided further that when the warrant of seizure has been issued but subsequent documents presented evidencing proper payment are found to be authentic and in order the district collector shall within 15 days again from the receipt of the motion okay can recall the warrant and have the goods released okay and um it should be subject to the clearance of the commissioner and it should be uh the release uh of these goods should also be um, not contrary to law or these goods is, are not prohibited or it does not uh, violate any law any laws of the CMT or, or any other laws that are related into it